Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Ghosts aren't real. They can't hurt you, the therapist says. Well, let me tell you something. There was a mouse in my home. Yeah, we were able to get rid of it, but the smell is still here, which means the ghost of that mouse is haunting me. I wish I was a ghost fighting superhero or something so I could get rid of that ghost. Wow, this sure was a time. Danny Phantom, a cartoon about a teenager who has ghost powers and uses those powers to protect his hometown from any and all invading ghosts. One of Nickelodeon's most well-known cartoons of all time and one of the shortest running Nicktoons of the 2000s. It was created by Butch Hartman who previously created The Fairly Odd Parents and would later go on to create Tough Puppy and Bunsen as a Beast for Nickelodeon before he would leave the network in 2018. Danny Phantom takes place in Amity Park and focuses on a 14 year old kid named Danny Fenton who gets ghost powers in an accident and uses them to fight ghosts alongside his two best friends. Danny Phantom was the second animated show Hardman developed for the network and could be considered the most well known to this day. Danny Phantom got very positive reviews and has a massive fan following even after all these years. And guess what? What? Danny Phantom only ran for a little over three years from April 3rd, 2004 to August 24th, 2007 and had three seasons but didn't even reach at least 60 episodes like several other shows did. It ended off with only 53 episodes. Despite that, it's still one of the most memorable shows that emerged during this time. While The Fairly Odd Parents went on for over 15 years, the quality fluctuated so much as time went on and finally ended after a horrendous season 10. On the other hand, Danny Phantom definitely felt much more consistent in terms of its quality throughout its run. But of course, as a show that ran for a little over 3 years, had only 3 seasons with a total of 53 episodes and that's it, of course it's harder for the quality to take a massive downhill spiral in that short amount of time. So I thought it'd be fun to look back on that history and discuss everything we know about it. And even though this show hasn't been on as long as Spongebob or The Fairly Odd Parents, there's still a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's get on with it. The development of Danny Phantom started all the way back to the early 2000s. Butch Hartman was working on The Fairly Odd Parents. At that time, there was only a six half hour season one of The Fairly Odd Parents, seven if you include this Christmas episode because eight was too much for Nickelodeon to handle. The ratings were slowly going up on The Fairly Odd Parents and the show would shortly be renewed for more seasons. Around the same time, there was talk around the studio about making a new boys action show. This made Butch Hartman start to think about what he would want his own boys action show to be about. At the same time, he was also helping his mom move in with him in LA from her previous home in Las Vegas. He wanted his new show to have a title similar to Johnny Quest. Specifically, he wanted a title where the first word is a normal first name and the second word would be a last name that's kind of an action word. Some alternate action words included words like thunder, lightning, or power. He soon settled on the word phantom and 50% of the show was named. Some alternate first names for the character included Billy, Kenny, or Davey before settling on Danny and therefore the final title was revealed. Shortly after, he started thinking about what the show could be about. Several concepts were scrapped fairly early on. The first idea was to do a sort of Scooby-Doo Ghostbusters hybrid called Danny Phantom and the Spectre Detectors. This would have been Danny and his friends solving ghost mysteries like the characters on Scooby-Doo using gadgets like you'd see in Ghostbusters, but he soon decided against it. He thought about giving Danny a pet owl that would help him track ghosts, but this was quickly scrapped because Harry Potter started to gain popularity. Hartman also thought about giving Danny a cool ghost motorcycle, but this was also the moment where he finally decided to give Danny superpowers. Needless to say, the motorcycle idea was scrapped as well. After drawing several designs, the design that clicked with him was where his ghostly superhero transformation would have white hair. After the basic design was finished, Butch Hartman went out to dinner with the Nickelodeon executives to celebrate the renewal of the Fairly Odd Parents. The executives asked Hartman if he had any other cartoon ideas and he showed them his idea for Danny Phantom. They immediately let him produce a first episode after this. Once he was given permission for that, Butch Hartman started developing more concepts for the show, like the setting and more characters. The main city was named Amity Park, and the high school the character would attend would be called Casper High. Other main characters created at this point were Danny's two best friends, Tucker Foley, a techno geek, and Sam Manson, a goth girl. 
an older sister for Danny named Jazz Fenton, Danny's parents, Jack and Maddie Fenton, and the main antagonist, Vlad Masters, also known as Vlad Plasmius. As Butch Hartman was also working on the Fairly Odd Parents at this time, several crew members also worked on Danny Phantom, such as writer Steve Marmel and music composer Guy Moon. Voice actors that were cast this time included Gray Delisle Griffin to voice Sam Manson, who already worked with Butch Hartman when voicing Vicky on the Fairly Odd Parents, and Rob Paulson as Jack Fenton, who also voiced Mark Chang and his father on the Fairly Odd Parents. Other voice actors included David Kaufman as Danny Fenton, aka Danny Phantom, Ricky Deshaun Collins as Tucker Foley, Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Jazz Fenton, Kath Susie as Maddie Fenton, and Martin Mull as Vlad Masters, just to name a few. Unlike most cartoons, the characters of Danny Phantom have five fingers instead of four. Well, that's something SpongeBob doesn't have. Also, an individual Danny Phantom episode is actually 22 minutes long. Unlike SpongeBob, where most individual episodes are 11 minutes long, and a 30 minute time slot would usually consist of two 11 minute episodes, a half hour time slot for Danny Phantom would have just one 22 minute episode. The structure of a regular Danny Phantom episode is also similar to most live action shows, where you have the cold opening, the theme song, the next part after the theme song, and the final half that would be after the commercial break. In addition to the pilot episode, a whole season 1 of 20 episodes was greenlit. The animation was done by Rough Draft Animation Studios in Korea, the same company that animates Spongebob. And finally, on April 3rd, 2004, we got the 2004 Kids' Choice Awards, which was followed by the premiere of the first episode of Danny Phantom, Mystery Meat. The show was met with very positive reviews. Season 1 continued throughout 2004 and ended on June 17, 2005. Season 2 premiered shortly after on June 24, 2005 with the episode Memory Blank, which introduced a logo on Danny's superhero costume. This was done because Nickelodeon wanted to make the character more marketable, and the logo would stay there for the rest of the series. Season 2 also had 20 episodes, bringing the total amount of episodes in the show at this point to 40. This season also had three hour-long TV movies, or in the case of Danny Phantom, two-part episodes. There were three episodes that were two-parters in season two, Rainstorm, The Ultimate Enemy, and Reality Trip. Rainstorm was about the Ghost King being awakened from his eternal slumber and transporting the entire town of Amity Park into the Ghost's home, the Ghost Zone, and Danny Phantom saves the day and becomes a hero as before this episode he had been tricked by the town into thinking he was evil. The Ultimate Enemy was about Danny encountering his biggest and most unpredictable foe yet, himself 10 years in the future. Reality Trip was about Danny's secret identity getting revealed to the whole world, and he, Tucker, and Sam have to save their families and change reality so the world doesn't remember his secret. Season 2 ran throughout the rest of 2005 and finished on June 9, 2006. A season 3 was picked up, but this would end up being the final season of the series. Season 3 started on October 9, 2006 with the episode Urban Jungle, which was all about Danny getting a new superpower. This was the only episode of season 3 to premiere in 2006. The rest of the season came out in the summer of 2007. Season 3 had only 13 episodes, bringing the total to 53. There was another hour-long slash two-part episode this season, which was the final episode, Phantom Planet. And after three seasons, the final two episodes of Danny Phantom, Destabilized and Phantom Planet, aired on August 24, 2007, officially ending the series. Damn, that was it? Phantom Planet was about Vlad humiliating Danny Phantom, making him unnecessary in the eyes of the town of Amity Park. Then a giant asteroid that would destroy the entire planet was hurtling towards Earth. After Vlad attempts to save the world and failed, Danny stepped up, teamed up with every ghost throughout the whole series, except one, and saved the world, revealing his identity, becoming the biggest star in the world, and ended up together with Sam with a ring. They're f***ing 14! And with that being the end of the series, people don't like that episode. They felt it was not the best series finale it could have been, and said it was rather unfocused and a little rushed. While I can understand why some people feel that way, I don't think it's as bad as some people say it is. There's definitely some mispotential with it, I won't deny that. But to everybody out there who hates this episode, at least Nickelodeon let Danny Phantom have a proper series finale. 
Fans were so upset about the news of Danny Phantom being cancelled, they actually protested outside Nickelodeon's building in New York to keep the show going, but to no avail. Wow, why don't people do that more often? And even though the series finale was a little bit of a letdown, Danny Phantom still has a massive cult following to this day and will have a spot in every Nickelodeon fan's hearts. Or at least Nickelodeon fans that got to experience quality at some point in their lives. But now, let's analyze why this show could have gotten cancelled. The show was so unique, memorable, funny, and classic. The whole package. So why the fuck would this show be cancelled? Well, the president of Nickelodeon at the time was Herb Scannell. Under his leadership, Nickelodeon became one of the highest rated cable networks alongside TV Land. However, he resigned on January 5th, 2006, and the new president was Saima Zargami. I probably mispronounced that so bad. Butch Harmon himself stated that this was probably just the executives deciding to move on from the show. But considering that the change in the higher-ups happened a year before Danny Phantom was cancelled, it almost doesn't seem like this is a coincidence. Of course, this could have been Harmon not wanting to point fingers or just wanting to keep it a secret. So after doing some research, I've come to the conclusion that the reason Danny Phantom was cancelled was because... Budget reasons. According to this form I found online, apparently there were celebrity voice actors hired without Nickelodeon's consent and the animation was way more expensive compared to Spongebob or the Fairly Odd Parents. There was so much marketing just for The Ultimate Enemy alone and Nickelodeon didn't allow the series to go beyond season 3. But to be fair, even this may not be true from what I've researched, much like the Timmy Turner neglect may not be the reason why the Fairly Odd Parents may or may not have gone downhill. Even if this wasn't true, we can always appreciate what Butch Hartman has done for this show. After Danny Phantom was cancelled, the character just appeared in video games like Nicktoons Globs of Doom and more recently Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. In 2017, when Butch Hartman created Bunsen is a Beast, there was a 3 minute animated short posted online called Fairly Odd Phantom. The short features Danny, Sam, Tucker, and Jazz from Danny Phantom in the regular Fentonworks lab. It also featured Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda from The Fairly Odd Parents, Dudley Puppy and Kitty Catswell from Tough Puppy, and Bunsen from Bunsen is a Beast. This was mainly created as a way to celebrate Bunsen being added to the line of Nickelodeon cartoons created by Butch Hartman. Aside from that, nothing about the actual show, so that's about it. Or is it? In 2022, Danny Phantom was announced to make a return. Oh. The return was announced to occur in the form of a graphic novel called Danny Phantom A Glitch in Time. Oh! This features the return of Dark Danny from The Ultimate Enemy, and it will be released in July 2023. At first, I was unsure how I felt that the return wouldn't be a TV special or something, but after thinking about it, I think a graphic novel is a much better way to make this happen, especially after two classic Nicktoons, Rugrats and the Fairly Odd Parents, were ruined in the modern day via these reboots. And I'm not gonna lie, I honestly think this graphic novel is gonna be pretty cool. I mean, people may not read these days, but I'll gladly make an exception to check this out since it's the return of Danny Phantom. And that is the basic history of Danny Phantom, from an amazing series that was cancelled for an unclear reason as to why it was cancelled in the first place, which will forever be discussed, to appearing in only video games, to an official comeback in a way that's not a TV reboot, we have yet another very interesting history of a classic Nickelodeon cartoon. The show may not have lasted too long, but for what we did get, it was absolutely amazing and it will forever be cherished by Nickelodeon fans and cartoon fans alike. And now all that's left is to wait for a glitch in time to come out. If it turns out to be great, then I'll finally be happy. But if it turns out to be bad, then I'll probably regret making an exception to my own rule of not reading.